Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for another Journaling on a Budget. Today we're going to talk about recycling and looking at things in ways that you might not look at them normally. This is the handle off of Papa's wheelchair and it broke the other day and it, it broke to where it could not be fixed and so we had to get a new one. And I was going to throw this in the garbage and I was looking at it. And, you know, it looks like nice leather. I mean, it's not leather. It's faux leather or whatever. But, you know, it's very nice looking. It's in good shape. And I thought, well, what could I do with that? I mean, what am I going to do with this big old thing? Um, but why not try and take this leather off? And I don't know how it's going to work. We're going to find out. But And then we can use it in little bits. You can use it for tabs. You can use it for different things that you might want to try you know, have a piece of leather for that you don't have any leather for. So I'm just going to try and go in here and cut along the edge. Always cut away from yourself whenever you're using a razor knife. Now let's see if it's actually cutting because that's working very easily. And it has not cut through. So I'm going to try that again. But underneath here, there's a piece of hard plastic that I'm able to push against. So maybe I just need to push a little bit harder to actually cut through it. Now I can kind of feel that the fibers are cutting underneath. It's nice that it has that piece of hard plastic there because it does give me something to push against. And it is cutting. I'm just going to keep going this way and then I'm going to cut to this end too and then we could, should be able to maybe slide that out and then use our scissors which are much safer. Like I said, always make sure that you cut away from yourself. Be careful that there's no one or nothing in the way that you could cut and let's see if we can slide this out of here. And there we go. See, there's a little piece broken right there. I'm also going to peel this off. I don't have any foam rubber in what I bought. And so now, I have a little piece of foam rubber. It's in nice shape and everything. And I could use this for something different. Something that I want to maybe make stuffed. Maybe make a little charm. And let's use our scissors to cut this. so that we'll have just a nice flat piece. And sometimes when you have something like this and you think maybe I can do something with it, sometimes it's easier to go ahead and separate it like this so that it's easier to look at in a different way. When you leave it as a handle and just stick it in with your stuff, it's always sitting there and you're kind of thinking, what am I going to do with that? But when you separate it and you wind up with different parts and pieces, sometimes it's easier to say, oh, I could do this or I could do that. And so there we go. Now this piece right here, it's funny, this piece is navy blue, this is black. But um, I could say that, but sometimes you have to think, hmm, am I, am I saving too much? because you don't want to overrun yourself. And, um, you know, the color of this blue is not to my liking, really. I don't know. It's got the holes in it. But I will tell you one thing. See, it has these lines across here. Now, what does that remind you of? That reminds me of a book. A nice book that has the leather on the spine. So maybe we could take a strip of this when we're ready to do our spine and take a strip of this, just a strip, and put it over our book like this. Maybe one at the top and one at the bottom, depending on what we're going to cover this with. I, I already have an idea of what I want to cover this with, so I'm not sure if this will work or not, because it might, well, it's okay, it's not going to be long enough, but it would be long enough if I did it this way. So yeah, so now, I mean, look at that. Doesn't that just even make the cover look kind of cool already, the spine? I'm not going to have it that thick, but I like that. And so 
That is why I wanted you to think of things that you may not normally think that, that you could use. This whole great big thing was, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but this looked nice. And so I thought, if I could take it apart, it might work for something. <laughs> and so I'm going to set this aside, and I think I am going to try and use it on my spine, probably about half the thickness at the top and at the bottom. Maybe I'll make one a little wider than the other. I'm not sure. I'll have to think about that. So now we have that, and I'm going to put that in with all of my other things and try not to forget that I have it. Now what about this? What could we do with this? Well, let's see. What do we have here? Um, let's, let's pull out our painty fabric. So we have our pretty fabric, and what could we do with that? Now let's see, we've got our tassel that we're going to put on our spine, and it has a couple of beads on it. I haven't made any more for it, but I do have a couple of beads on there. What if I made a charm or something to hang on there also? So that's in blues and greens. So what do we have here? Do I have any blue fabric? I do. Ooh, look, blue and green. Ooh, it's one of those. Gotta like that. That is the um, squinched up can colored fabric that we did towards the beginning. I'm gonna set that aside. Oh, here's some of the blue. Although, oh, this is the one that I tea dyed. It's kind of grungy looking not super happy with it so I'm not going to put that on there but let's get our sewing kit and what else do we have well let's start with the sewing kit whoops my little needle thing broke apart. Let's use blue thread. Or should we use green thread? No, we'll use the blue thread. Ooh, I think I may have pulled the bottom the end of the thread. It's very stuck in there. So I think I'm pulling this from where they started instead of where they stopped. But I don't see any place else to get a hold of it. So we're just going to keep going and hope I don't break it. It's getting tighter and tighter. I still don't see a lot of times they tuck it, you know, like put a little slit and tuck it in there, but I don't see, I don't see that either. So we'll just see if we can get enough. But I hope you're enjoying this series, and I hope that when you look at things now, you'll look at them a little bit differently, especially if you're trying to build a stash and you don't have everything that everyone else has. And that's what this series was all about. Well, we're gonna use that piece there. I just can't find any other spot for it. Um, but yeah, I hope that this just gives you some inspiration to know that you don't have to have all of those things that others have and you can really make something that's going to turn out nice if you just take your time, look at things a little differently than what they really are, and see if there is something that you can come up with. Okay. So this was not put together that well, but... 
think I'm going to get a piece that's big enough to use. That should be big enough to use. And remember that when you're watching other people do things, don't look at it and think, I need that exact same thing. Look at it and think, what do I have that I can use in that same way? I'm just going to pull my thread down there. I don't have any glasses on, so we're going to see if I can do this or not. I take the needle to the thread. I'm not getting it. I can't see it very well. I can't see the eye of the needle. The eyes are so tiny on these needles. Nope. All right, let's see. We have a needle threader here. And all the needles are the same, so it's not gonna do me any good to get a different one. Yeah, I don't see any. This is a needle threader. It came in this little sewing kit. And what it does is you take the wire, see it has a little wire on it, just right there, and you push that wire into the hole of your needle. I'm not sure if this hole is even big enough to do that, but we're going to try. Okay. Did I, I did it. Once you push it into the hole of the needle, you have it like that. Then you stick your thread, which is my long piece. That's the short piece. You stick your thread, because on this side now there's like a loop, so you put your thread through that loop. Whoops, well I had it through there. So put that through, hold on to it so it doesn't pull out, hold on to both sides, and then, <coughs> excuse me, pull your needle threader out. Now, these little two wires are barely hooked on this right here. So don't pull from here Grab a hold of the wire itself and pull it through. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you'll just pull this um, wire right off your needle threader. Now, maybe um, better ones, more expensive ones might be better and, and are hooked better. But because this was really cheap from the dollar store and it came in this whole kit, it's very cheap. But it worked. So that's cool. Now I'm, we know how to use that. All right, now... Oh my goodness. All right, and every if you ever see me sew anything, you'll know that I am not the type of person that sews. You'll be able to tell just by watching. All right, so I'm not sure exactly how, this seems to be a pretty strong thread, but I'm going to double it. I'm just gonna get both ends even with each other, like that. And then I'm gonna wrap it around my finger. This is the tail here. I'm going to hold that down, wrap it around in front of the tail like this so that they pass each other. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll with my thumb. I'm going to roll that off my finger, grab a hold of it and pull it down. And that makes a knot. And that's how you that's how I knot a double, you know, to put your double thread together. Alrighty now, so let's look at this. Let's cover some of that foam with some of this fabric. And we don't want it to be huge. So let's see. And what do we want it to be like? Do we maybe want to make a circle? And then we could put something on it, a square. 
let's let's maybe just make a square then we could put maybe a little like emblem on it I'm gonna put my knife away and you know this little rounded part is kind of cool so instead of like cutting super close and wasting that that we might use it for something um, I'm gonna cut down here and then just give it another cut right here I don't think I want to do it that big I mean I could I could put it right in there and cover it like that but I don't think that I want it to be that big so I'm going to I'm gonna so that it's all kind of the same I'm gonna cut this little rounded part off that was there and then just cut it about the size of a square now even this one right here you could wrap this in a piece of fabric just like that maybe tie a little thing on each end and it would make like a little piece of candy what the heck let's do it okay so I'm gonna put this in here like this because we're gonna sew it we don't need to glue it I don't think let's put it this end it's got a little of the green and a little of the blue okay so I've got about a half an inch on that end let's cut off a half an inch on this end do we want the frayed part we've got frayed part on our fabric I think we'll put that on the outside just gonna wrap this over like this and then I'm just gonna kind of squish it and roll it and maybe on that part I do want to just put a little glue roll that like that it's not real tight so it's not coming unrolled so that's good and then I think I'm just going to my foam is right here so I'm gonna put my needle in just above that foam go all the way through <laughs> And don't bring the needle with you. Okay, I'm going to cut off a little bit of this extra sticking out here, but not the knot. And then I'm just going to wrap this around really tight. Give it a pull. I've gone all the way around, so I'm going to go back through again. Because if I just keep winding it, it'll just come unwound. really tight so I think I might have stuck it through the I might have stuck it through the foam because it shouldn't be this hard to pull out although remember what I said I am NOT a sore oh come on my goodness And give it another pull keep it nice and tight maybe one more wrap around and just grab a little bit of the fabric right in that same area Was supposed to tie a knot and I didn't let's do that again okay so when you want to make a knot you go ahead and you pull your fabric through until you're right almost pulled all the way through 
you've got this little loop here at the end as you're pulling it through take your loose thread that you just put through put it through that loop and then pull tight and that's what makes a knot and you can do that a couple of times depending on um, how much wear and tear you think whatever you're sewing is going to get but there we go so see now it's got this little flare on the end let's do the other end real quick real quick I'm sewing there's nothing about quick when I'm sewing okay so the foam is right there I'm gonna put my needle through let's see There. Go all the way around. Pull it tight. I'm going to go around one more time. And then go back through your fabric. I'm just squishing it really tight because I don't want that where I wound it up, I don't want that to come undone. Okay, so there we go. Maybe one more wrap because that's what I had on the other side. Except I wrapped it this way, so I'm going to wrap it this way again. <laughs> and then I'm going to try and pick up just a little bit of the fabric. Like that. And then get down to where I just have a little bit of a loop. Wait till you just have a little bit of a loop before you put your needle through because if it's way out here and you put your needle through you might get it all knotted up and then you just pull that loop tight and there we go give that a little clip and there we go isn't that cute it looks like a little piece of candy got a little extra thread sticking out there I'm not sure if I cut it if it's gonna come undone always know that that when you cut off extra thread you really should know what you're cutting because you might make it come undone. But if it came undone, I could just do it back up again. But isn't that cute? I think that's cute. And you know what I'm going to do with that? I'm going to take it and I'm going to hang it on here. And how am I going to hang it on here? I thought about sewing it, but I kind of want it to dangle a little bit. Let's make another knot and I will say I do lick my fingers when I'm gonna make my knot so that it's just a little bit damp it holds on to the thread better and then when you wrap this around it's easier for you to roll that off together and then grab it but it's easier to roll it than if your hands are dry okay I think I'm gonna make this part the top and you can give it a squish and a fix and I'm going to sew it right through here and I'm going to go through and come right up in the middle of our piece of candy and then I'm just going to where are my beads my well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to add more beads anyways. I'm just going to sew it right on here. But I'm just going to do it so that it will just kind of dangle there. Like that. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. Sorry about that. Alrighty, so I left it just like it was. So I came way out up here. I really would have, should have just kind of come real close there. So there wasn't so much thread showing, but it's too late now. So then I'm just going to try and grab a piece of this, come back down to there, and then I'm going to go around one more time, find my loop, watch my loop as it's coming up here. 
and then put my needle through the loop and give it a pull. And that should hold just fine like that. So we'll knock that off of there and there. So now we have a little piece of candy hanging on our dangle along with our other beads. And I don't know if you saw this bead right here. Um, when I made this one afterwards, I think I put the, the gold on there. And what that was, was I had got this, this cording and this cording comes undone. And underneath of it, there's some yellow string, but then you've got this gold here. And so I just took that and wrapped it around the bead. So see, there's always things, if you just look and say, well, what can I do with what I have? Um, and you know, you'll, you'll find something. And so this one could actually just be done. I would need another square of fabric this big because I used some of it. I don't think I have enough. I know I don't have enough, so there's no point in cutting that and wasting it. All right, this is wide enough. Just gonna make it a square. Like that. And then we could take this and put it in here and put this one on top. And then just sew around it. You could sew it inside out and then turn it right side out, but I am going to just sew next to it. And I'm gonna start from inside, and I'm gonna do that because I don't wanna see the knot. So I'll just start inside like that and now we'll just see the thread if you sew it inside out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a little bit of it and then put it back in and if you've watched people do slow stitching that's all this is it's it's a running stitch you just go in and out or back and forth however you would like to say that Okay, let's see. That's about as wide as that needs to be. I didn't want to take another stitch, which is why I came out the bottom, but I'll just come back up here now and do the same thing. Just down and up, down and up until you get to where you want to go. Every few stitches, pull your thread through so that you don't get it too tight. And that looks like that's going to be about far enough. So I'm going to go out just a little bit further. Go down. Up. And down and up and down and up. Pull that, pull that through. Okay. Now we've got this little square here. We better not go any further or we'll never get this in there be hard enough as it is but we're just going to open that up and give this a squish and just push it down in there until we get all the way to I want to make sure we get it all the way down there to the to the bottom seam adjust it if you need to And then, where did we stop at? Right there. So I'm going to hold those two pieces together. And then give that a little bit of a push. And kind of hold it back there just so that it's out of my way. And finish this up. Down. And down and up and down and up ow 
and then poke your finger. So there we go. Isn't that kind of cute? Alrighty. Okay, I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to knot this. I am going to separate these two pieces of fabric. And I'm going to just go through just this one layer. Like that. And then... I'm just going to grab a little bit of fabric like this. Here's our little loop and I'm going to just go through the loop, pull it tight, and then just knock it off. There we go. So now we have our little pillow. While I was away I did shred most of the edges and I wanted to show you um, you know, if you're not used to doing that, the way to do it is when you rip it, you're going to already have a bit of a frayed edge. I need to separate the two pieces again. Okay. So, I got a little bit loose. I didn't get that very tight. Um, but this one was ripped and it's much kind of messier. And I like that look. When you've got one that you've cut, they're very, very straight. So... Um, I just kind of go in and rough them up a little bit so they look more like this side. But you'll never get them to look exactly like that side because they are cut straight. But the way that you do it is um, when you've got your piece of fabric and now here, usually on your rip side, see on the rip side we've got the little threads already sticking out. So that's the easiest side to start with. You've got your straight edge here and you want to take some of your threads out of there. So what you do is where, where it's already got just the little strings sticking up, you grab a hold of those strings and then you just pull those out. And once you get one side started a little bit, um, then it will be easy to just turn it and keep going if, you, if you're planning on doing all four sides. Um, and you don't want to try and grab a whole bunch of strings, just one. Sometimes two will work. And if it starts to kind of knot up, you know, just kind of stop and, and work it a little bit. Okay, now if I want to go this way, then I'm going to take the strings from here and pull those out. Like this. And then if I want to do some on this side over here, I'm going to take these strings here. And you just take the ones that are right closest to the edge and just pull those out like that. And now, what am I going to do with this in the journal? I really don't know. Am I going to use it in the journal? I don't know that either. But it's cute. And um, I'm trying to pull too many pieces of string at one time. And the thing is, is that, okay, I have my journaling things here, but it doesn't mean that I just have to journal with them. Let's say you have a daughter or a granddaughter that's making a Barbie house. Um, this would make a really cute throw pillow on Barbie's couch so you know and you know even at that it would hang pretty like this and maybe I can find something that I want to stick on there maybe I don't want these edges as large I could cut them down even shorter and then shred them a little bit you don't want to shred to where you've sewn because then you know you're going to um, let that go but maybe I want to you know I could put a knot in it and come up through the middle and then back down again and pull it really tight and then it would be like I don't want to do that yet because I don't know what I want to do with it but then it would be like a pillow with a button in the middle you know it would it would pull that right down in there so you know so out of this piece of garbage that we started with we have a cute little piece of candy embellishment we have a cute little pillow that can be used for whatever we decide to use it for. It can be an embellishment pillow. It doesn't have to be um, for, for a Barbie house or whatever. And then we have our leather that we are going to be able to use on our spine if when we get there, if we decide that we want to do that. Because I think that that would be really cool. And being that this is not real leather, we don't have to worry about conditioning it or anything. It's going to glue down okay because it's got this fabric on the back, so that's going to help the glue stick. So, you know, you take your garbage and you look at it, and some garbage is just garbage. 
you don't keep it. But some things were, I thought about this, that I wanted this piece of faux leather, and I didn't want to keep this whole thing. That makes it really feel like you're collecting garbage anyways. And this can be put like even in a binder or something now that it's nice and flat. It's not that big old thing. But I didn't really even think about the fact that this would be in there. And I like that. You know, I think it's really cute. And I have even made little pillows like this um, with paper. And just put a little bit of stuffing in the middle. And just glued around the edges. And with that, my stuffing was just a p one sheet of toilet paper folded and folded and folded until it was little and then I put it in the middle and then I glued the edges down and put a picture on the front and those were really really cute so so when you're getting ready to get rid of things look at them and see if it is something that you really think you can use and you know and set yourself up an area like for your crafting or for your recycling and when that area gets full then you kind of need to go back through it again and look at everything and think Am I going to use this or am I going to use this or should I get rid of it at this point in time? Don't just keep everything until it is such a big, huge mess that you don't feel like you can do anything with it. If you haven't used it, I know a lot of people are like in 30 days, but you know, to me, if you haven't used it in six months, um, either you forgot it was there and you forgot what you were going to do with it or you may never use it. So if your area for your recycling is full, in order to put more things in there, go through it and get rid of some of it that you haven't used and now you think, maybe I won't use it. Or, like I kept a whole bunch of envelopes when I didn't have a whole lot of paper and, but now I have a lot of paper, I don't need to have as many envelopes anymore because I don't use them that often. So, um, you know, so just remember to go through your recycle and clear it out once in a while, but also remember, look at what you have um, as you're getting rid of certain things and see if it's something that you may use in your crafting that you don't have something like that. I have no leather in this series and so now I have this fake leather but I still have it and it might look really cool on my spine. I now have little things that I can that I can play with. So thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate you stopping by and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.